Dr. Jesse Smollett has, was hospitalized after what Chicago police are calling a possible hate crime. And his music manager did tell detectives they were on the phone as the alleged attack unfolded. It makes me want a hot dog real bad. Lee Daniels, Empire's creator, posted then deleted this photo of Smollett, calling the attack a cowardly act. We were the ones that did it. Yeah, it was us. It doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. Jesse Smollett was a guy that posted about a horrible hate crime that happened to him on Twitter in 2019. It happened late at night in Chicago and he was the victim of a brutal assault. But we all later found out that Jesse was not telling the truth. I mean, his story was a little weird to begin with and some people called it out here and there, but I mean, I, I guess nobody had any hard proof. But over time, the police officers, they have to do a full investigation on what happened to him. And they're like, wait, none of this adds up. I mean, the story's crazy. Turns out he paid some people to attack him. So the attack actually happened, but he set it up so that he could play victim. It's crazy. Now, here's the funny part. Jesse was so busy soaking in his 15 minutes of fame. Then he went and did an interview where he talked in detail about the brutal assault that he encountered that night in Chicago. And it's just him lying for 15 minutes. I cannot believe that this is 15 minutes long. And I also can't believe I haven't seen it before. I'm pissed off. What is it that has you so angry? Is it the, the attackers? It's the is attackers, it but it's also the attacks. It's like, you know, at first it was a thing of like, listen, if I tell the truth, then that's it, because it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Then it became a thing of like, oh, how can you doubt that? Like, how do you, how do you not believe that? It's the truth. And then it became a thing of like, oh, it's not necessarily that you don't believe that this is the truth. You don't even want to see the truth. <laughs> the truth. I thought he sat down in this interview to talk about the attack, but Jesse sat down to call out the doubters. That's what this, that's what's on, that's the top of mind item for him in this whole thing. He's like, how do you guys not believe me? And Frank Gatson, who's like my uncle, and he's also my creative director, and he picked me up. And then we got back to the apartment there was no food. And so I went out to Walgreens thinking that they were 24 hours and to have a smoke. If at any point while you're watching this, you start to think, oh, Jesse, was he telling the truth? Oh, poor guy, anything. No, no, this man was lying five ways to Sunday. And the final nail in the coffin is there is a photocopy of the check that he wrote to the attackers. He wrote a check and they have the check. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! This is what he said happened. <laughs> uh, Walgreens was closed. Um, so I called him up and I said, hey, I'm gonna run to Subway, which was across the street, and I'm gonna get a salad. Do you want anything? I went to the Subway and got the order. During that time, I texted my manager, thinking that he was still in Australia because he was on an Australian tour with one of his other clients. Mm -hmm. and I said, yo, call me when you can. He called me immediately, and while he was on the phone, I. Uh, heard as I was crossing the intersection, I heard Empire. Oh. And I don't answer to Empire. <laughs> My name is. Is that the show he was on? Imagine somebody who just sees Jennifer Coolidge on the street and they're like, hey, White Lotus. <laughs> it makes me want a hot dog real bad. Okay, I guess I could have it. But something about Jesse just saying that the guy around the corner was like, Empire. Like imagine right before you get attacked, regardless of him being on the show, somebody just yells, Empire! <laughs> and then they sock you in the face. That's actually funny. I take it all back. <laughs> I believe him. And I didn't answer. I kept walking and then I heard Empire. So I turned around oh. and I said, did you just say to me? And I see the uh, attacker, the attacker. Uh, masked. And he said, this MAGA country punches me right in the face. Oh, this is 
so embarrassing. Bro, you know there are no MAGA supporters that could identify the cast of Empire on the street. <laughs> they just could not do it. Got him. We f got him. So I punched his back. Oh. And then um, we started tussling. You know, it was very icy. And we ended up tussling by the stairs. Uh, fighting, fighting, fighting. There was a second person involved oh. who was kicking me in my back. And uh, then it just stopped. And they ran off. And I saw where they ran. And the phone was in my pocket, but it had fallen out. And it was sitting there. And my manager was still on the phone. His manager was not in on it, but he probably called his manager because he wanted to have a witness. <laughs> Imagine the manager making statements to the police. He's like, uh, I don't know what happened. I just heard empire. Up the phone and I said, Brandon. And he's like, what's going on? And I said, I was just jumped. And I then I looked down and I see that there's a rope around my neck, Ooh. which I hadn't you obviously. You hadn't noticed that, it before? No, you didn't because see? it was so fast. You know what I'm saying? It was so fast. How long did this all It felt take like like minutes, but it probably was like 30 seconds, honestly. I can't tell you, honestly. Um, I noticed the rope around my neck and I started screaming. And I said, there's a rope around my neck. Did you get any kind of description of the attack? I gave a body description and I, you know, because I saw this, but, and you know, right here or whatever, but I didn't see, I can't tell you what color their eyes were. I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. And I did not see anything except the second person I saw running away and the first person yeah i saw God, this is such a bad saw story his stature. i gave the description as best as i could you have to understand also that it's chicago in winter people can wear ski masks and nobody's going to question that all the way through until this time on thursday afternoon we're going to feel these kinds of conditions moving in minus 30 to minus 60 for the wind chill the police have gone through a lot of do you guys think that she believes him. Video, and they were able to capture an image of two people of interest. Have you seen that image? Bro, don't look, that look like black folks. <laughs> and they were black folks. We were the ones that did it. Yeah, it was us. That looks like black folks. He was trying to say that these were the bag of people. I don't know how to explain it, but that looks like black folks. <laughs> do you believe that they could possibly be the attackers? I do. What is it about their their size or what why do you feel that they could possibly be because i was there for me when that was released i was like okay we're getting somewhere i don't have any doubt in my mind that that's them never did why did you hesitate to want to call the police you know there's a level of pride there we needed to post it on twitter first that's why we live in a society where Dude, he's about to cry. As a gay man, you are considered you can, somehow you can, like, to be weak. You can tell he's about weak. to cry. I am not weak. And we, are, as a people, are not weak. So I, mean, I can accept that there was pride there. There's also privacy. Didn't he post it on Twitter? Jesse Smollett, Twitter. Ah! I'm just seeing all the, the tweets of like politicians that were like, what happened to Jussie Smollett hits home for us all, and we will not be silenced. And this other one that's like, as Jussie Smollett recovers from a racist and homophobic hate crime, the mainstream, and I'm like, Ugh. but you know what though? I also feel bad for the people that got roped into it because you want to believe, like when somebody says something awful like that happens, like it's racist or it's homophobic or something, like you want to listen first. You do listen first, right? He just kept lying, bro. Liar, liar, plants for hire. And we are, as a people, are not weak. So, I mean, I can accept that there was pride there. There's also privacy, you know, at the end of the day, look what has happened, you know, look what has happened. So I don't, I'm glad that Frank called the police. I'm glad that we reported it. Um, during that time before they came, it took them about maybe half hour to come. Uh -huh. And during that time, I was looking at myself, just like checking myself out. I saw the bruise on my neck, you know, like the little, um, the rope burn around my neck. And then I, but I smelled bleach. I know the smell of bleach. And I saw on my sweatshirt, it had marks on it, like spots on it when you have a bad bleach job. So then I was what? like, there's bleach on me too. So when the police came, 
time. Is he trying to say that they were going to... Hold on. I kept the clothes on. I kept the rope. So on. you had the rope on the entire time? I mean, it wasn't like wrapped around, but yeah, it was Girl, around I because I wanted the them to see. Board. I wanted them to see what this was. I told them what happened, everything. I also asked them to turn their body cams off because they were trying to stay in the hallway. In a world where that actually happened, okay? For me personally, I would not leave the rope around my neck because I wanted other people to see. It feels very, look, I am a victim. I am a victim, which is exactly like who he was. Like, I would be like, wow, this is super fucked up. Like, they clearly were trying to send a message with this. I'm going to take this off, but tell somebody what happened. It, it's just so, it's just so odd. And I was like, please just come in. Like, I don't want a big scene with my neighbors and with like the second round of police officers. Um, I went down to where it happened and I walked them through exactly what happened. And I looked up and I saw that there was a camera directly on the light post that is in the intersection. So I'm like, there it is. A potential break in the case that would eventually oh. fall apart days later. And then the detective told me that the camera inside of the casing was facing north. So they didn't have it. And that was disappointing. The vast majority of people have been supportive and loving and understanding. And then as time has gone on, and that there's no, um, you know, it's two o'clock in the morning. You're going to Subway. Sub Subway zero. is open 24 hours. Like people kill me when they say things like that because it's like Subway is open 24 hours for a reason. He's so mad about the people that don't believe him. Like he's not mad that this happened. He's mad that people don't believe him. Hungry at night and you ain't got no food, you go to Subway. The, the camera Ooh. facing north. Ooh. How is that my issue? It feels like if I had said it was a Muslim or Mexican or someone black, I feel like the doubters would have supported me a lot much more, uh -huh. a lot more. And that says a lot about the place that we are in our country right now. The fact that we have these fear mongrels, these people that are trying to separate us and it is impressive how far a liar will go it is fascinating it's just not okay and for all of the people the next time that you see someone report something maybe well after the fact that it happened and you say to them well why are you waiting till now just remember that mine was reported right away Oops. And look what has happened. The phone. Mm -hmm. When did you, because as you said, it was a, an accurate account mm -hmm. of the timeline, valuable information. When did you make that information available to the police? We gave, we had to give the phone records, um, which they didn't originally ask for my phone records. They asked for my phone. They wanted me to give my phone to the tech yeah. for three to four hours. Yeah. I'm sorry, oh. but <gasps> oh. I'm not gonna do that. I'm sorry, you want me to give you my phone to, to check my phone? I'm the victim. I'm, I'm the victim here. Why would you take the victim's phone? It's me. Why? Because I have private pictures and videos Ooh. and numbers my partner's number, my family's number, my castmate's number, my friend's numbers. What in chat that like, even if you got booty pics on your phone, if you would hand over your phone when something like this happened so the police know that you weren't involved and you didn't have anything to do with it. Especially when he's so pissed about like people not believing him, like why would you not give over like the, give the biggest resource, you know? My private emails, my private songs, my private voice memos. My private songs! I don't know what that's my be playlist, to my Gail. Phone for, and honestly, by then, inaccurate false statements had already been put out there. Earlier this week, he submitted phone records from within an hour of the incident, but Chicago police said they were limited and heavily redacted, oh. adding they need additional information to corroborate the investigative timeline. His attorneys tell us they are willing to cooperate. Smollett also says he has been troubled by inaccurate claims. What other ones had you heard that were inaccurate? that I had said that they were wearing MAGA hats. I never said that. I didn't need to add anything like that. 
They called me a They called me a There's no which way you cut it. I don't need some MAGA hat as the cherry on top of some racist Sunday. I like how in Jesse's story, they said all the buzzwords, <laughs> all of them. Bad word, bad word, MAGA, fuck you. <laughs> like, that's this reminds me of true crime cases where the killer will say, oh, somebody broke in. There was a burglar. There was somebody outside. And they give the most ridiculous like description of what they think a perpetrator looks like. When in reality, they're the perpetrator. The perpetrator looks like you. It ain't me. <laughs> ain't me. <laughs> I've heard that it was a date gone bad, which I so resent what? that narrative. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go out and get a tuna sandwich and a salad to meet somebody. That's ridiculous. Oh my God, he has and a huge offensive. ego. Yes, there's Grinder. Yes, there's Jack. Yes, there's all of these things, which I about? have not been on in years. I can admit that I was on that back in the day. Mm -hmm. I was single. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? About? But I have not been on that in years. That right there, that's how I know that ABC doesn't take him seriously because they let that in to show his character. They could have cut that out. ABC will do that. If, if, they, if they're supporting somebody, but the person says something like a little off color, they'll just like snip it out keep their you know whole thing together they didn't they didn't believe him that's why they put this whole interview up like this like to call attention to this nightcat tara says i work in television news you are 100 percent correct <laughs> hey it's unfair to i hate this word but it's unfair to the victim what were oh. your your injuries what you, were, um, you. they did x-rays i didn't have it was reported that i had like fractured ribs or why are you posing like that why he's doing the hold on Sometimes I need to like imitate stuff to see what I would do. Hold on, if I've just been beat up, what kind of selfie am I gonna take? No, I would take like a like a smolder selfie for sure. I'd be like, yeah, I do. I would do a smolder selfie. So I'm just talking shit at this point. But if it was, but if it was really bad, like if it was really bloody, I think I would be real dramatic with it. I'd be like, <sighs> I was just in a lot of pain. You know, my clavicle was messed up. My rib was um, was bruised, but I wasn't, nothing was cracked. Like I walked into the hospital. Bard said, that's why this interview is 15 minutes long. They didn't believe him, so they cut nothing. Dude, you're so f***ing right. Because I was shocked that this was this long. I was shocked. Normally, the ABC interview is like three or four minutes long. They, they put this whole thing out for a reason. And also, she's not talking that much because he's saying enough. This is so embarrassing. Why do you think you were targeted? I can just assume, I mean, I come really, really hard against 45. I come really, really hard against his administration. Is it just me or does it seem like he's like bragging right now? like? Well, they might have targeted me because I I come down pretty hard and I I don't hold my tongue. So I guess I guess I deserved it. And I don't hold my tongue. Yeah. I want to ask you about Jesse Smollett. I think that's horrible. Uh, it doesn't get worse as far as I'm concerned. Were you aware that he made that statement? I saw it. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> you know? Um... You know, I appreciate him not brushing over it. And there is no doubt in your mind what motivated this attack. I could only go off of their words. Mm. I mean, who Ooh. says empire this MAGA country? Nobody. Nobody says that, Jossie, except for the people that you paid to say it. Ties a noose around your neck and pours bleach on you. Mm. And this is just a friendly fight. Uh, also, what is he trying to say that like, okay, on one hand, he's trying to say, oh, well, maybe I was targeted because I speak out so much like politically. So are you saying that like they saw, they were looking for him? Then he has this other account where it's like, oh, I was just walking down the street and these were just racist guys that were looking, uh, looking for somebody to beat up. Like that's the way he made, what? So is he trying to say he was targeted and they were waiting for him to leave his house at midnight to go get a sandwich? Tonight's the night. Let's bring the rope, boys. <laughs> like, what? I am forever changed. And I don't subscribe to the idea 
that everything happens for a reason, but I do subscribe to the idea that we have the right and the responsibility to make something meaningful out of the things that happen to us, good and bad. What do you feel people need to hear the most from this story? I think that what people need to hear is just the truth. It's just the truth, because everybody has their own idea. Some are <laughs> healing and some are hurtful. But I just want young people, young members of the LGBTQ community, young black children to know how strong that they are, to know the power uh -huh. that they hold in their little pinky. It's been two weeks since that night left actor Jesse Smollett bruised but not broken, and he's still processing the raw emotions. Have you ever been threatened before? Yeah. I get threatened all the time on Twitter and Instagram and DMs. He spoke so little about the incident and more about the aftermath in this whole thing. Like that's that's what I take away the most from it. I'm a public figure. I'm very outspoken. <laughs> Sometimes maybe too outspoken, but it's who I am, you know, so I get the idea of pissing people off, that you're gonna rub people the wrong way. In fact, the week before the attack, police confirm a letter was sent to the Fox studio in Chicago with threatening oh language. God. A week before the attack, this letter was sent to Fox News. Guys, is that, is this the news? So this letter got sent a week before the attack. So Jesse sent this letter. I have no words. What words do you have? words i have no doubt that he did this ransom letter he really went old school villain and cut out the magazine card bro tell me they ain't go in jesse's apartment and find magazines with holes in them. <laughs> do you think there's a link between the letter and the attack um and you did mention it to the police right away absolutely. about the letter absolutely um just because on the letter it had a stick figure hanging from a tree with a gun pointing towards it with the words that said, small at Jesse, you will die black there was So no he's saying that the attackers targeted him and they knew his name, but they still yelled before they hit him, empire. It doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. <laughs> but the return address said in big red, you know, like caps, MAGA. Did I make that up too? And despite lack of video surveillance footage, Smollett hopes to rewrite the narrative about that night, saying he fought back against his attackers and reported the incident after his creative director called 911. He's supposed to be well known requesting a report and said the noose was placed over the friend's neck. I want that video <laughs> found so badly because for probably four reasons. Number one, I want them to find the people that did it. I just realized not once has he tried to call attention to finding the guys that did it. Isn't that normally people's focal point? We're at the end of the interview and he just now brought it up. Number two, I want them to stop being able to say alleged attack. Number three, I want them to see that I fought back. <laughs> and I want a little gay boy who might watch this to see that I fought back. And it does not take Dude. anything away from people that are not able to do that. He wants to but be I the hero back. so bad. What do you say to a young gay man, a young gay person? To learn to fight. And I don't just mean like learn to fight. I mean, learn to fight. <laughs> Hold on, I need to go back. I need you to look at the range of emotions we go through here. We go from crying to ah, 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 and then wisdom. <laughs> gay man, a young gay person. To learn to fight. And I don't just mean like learn to fight. <laughs> I mean, learn to fight, <laughs> learn to be a fighter. I am not advocating violence at all. So let's be clear about that. If you're gonna die, fight until you do. I just want everybody to know to learn to fight. You know, get a couple hits in there. <laughs> but don't fight unless you must <laughs> like that is exactly what he just did that 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 was like deception 101 with like what he really meant like yeah i got a couple of hits in like that's oh my god bro if you don't fight you have no chance i have fought for love i'm an advocate Ooh. 
I respect too much mm -hmm. the people who I am now one of those people mm -hmm. who have been attacked in any way. You do such a disservice when you lie about things like this. If the attackers are never found, how will you be able to heal? Jesse, if the attackers are never found, what will you do? <gasps> I don't even want to know! Great um, question. I don't know. Let's just hope that they are. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's, let's not go there yet. Let's, um... <laughs> I was talking to a friend, and I said, I just want them to find them. And she said, sweetie, they're not going to find them. They're just been This is unbelievable. This also reminds me of Sherry Papini, where she was like, I, I, hey, I don't think we're ever gonna find the two ladies. And also, I think we should just like leave them alone. Let's just forget about that. Let's just forget about that. Let's forget about the message. The message is, I, I'm a victim, okay? Let's all pay attention to the victim. Like, <laughs> that just made me so angry because, so I'm just gonna be left here with this? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just gonna be left here with, with like, so they get to go free and go about their life and possibly attack someone else. She does and not. I'm here to left with the, left with the aftermath of this bull. That's not cool to me. That's not okay. So I understand how difficult it will be to find them, mm. but we gotta. Dude, his message is so confusing. And you know what is so dangerous? for a liar with a big story. The most dangerous thing for them is a journalist that actually works in victim advocacy because they have heard so many stories. And like, we know that, you know, not every person that it's like experienced something really difficult is gonna act the same. There's no textbook way that they act. However, for some reason, the liars do all act the same. And journalists that have been doing this for like 20 or 30 years, ooh, they can sniff out a liar real fast. That lady did not believe a fucking lick of anything that man was saying. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs>